55 million years ago, in a part of the world that is now the foothills of the Himalayas, a small hoofed creature about the size of a raccoon fled for the safety of the water. The creature was called Indohyus, which means pig of India, and study of this creature's fossils show that it had very dense bones, and this among with other features mean that it would have been at least partly aquatic, as heavy bones often offer ballast in the water. With its hoofs, and overall appearance, it shared many features with deers, and in life it probably would have looked like one, only it wasn't most closely related to deers. Indohyus had very uniquely shaped ear bones, where they had a thickened knob of bone in the middle of their ear, called an involucrum. The only group of living animals known to possess ears like this are whales, because despite being the size of a raccoon, Indohyus was the earliest known relative of the largest animals that ever lived, the whales. Modern whales, or cetaceans, are almost completely carnivorous now, but they are most closely related to the hoofed animals, specifically a group of them named artiodactyls, that include animals like camels, pigs, and deer. So although now whales are so well adapted to swimming that they have streamlined torpedo-shaped bodies, it makes sense that their earliest ancestors would look more pig or deer-like. DNA evidence shows that out of the artiodactyl hoofed animals, the closest living relative of whales are hippos. Like hippos, Indohyus isn't thought to be a direct ancestor of whales, but is more likely a very closely related animal that split away after the group had become semi-aquatic. However, Indohyus was even more closely related to whales than hippos. Unlike modern whales, which are all carnivorous, Indohyus was more similar to other animals in their artiodactyl family, as it most likely ate plants, and although could have been omnivorous, they definitely weren't predatory. This means that they wouldn't have adapted to life in the water to capture aquatic prey like fish. As Indohyus were small animals, it has been suggested that the initial evolution towards being more aquatic may have been driven by a need to escape predators. They may have lived like the small semi-aquatic chevrotain that submerges itself in water to hide from birds of prey. The first whale ancestor known to have been predatory, and the earliest animals in the fossil record considered to be true cetaceans, were named the Pachycetids, that lived around 50 million years ago in the Eocene epoch. They were named this because the fossils of the first member of this group discovered, Pachycetus, were found in Pakistan. Pachycetus had a similarly shaped body to Indohyus, but was much larger, being around the same size as a wolf. But this wasn't true of all Pachycetids, as there was another member of this family, called Ichthalestes, that was probably more fox-sized. However, unlike Indohyus, both Pachycetus and Ichthalestes had long snouts filled with sharp teeth. The type of wear on the teeth of a Pachycetus fossil shows that they would have eaten small animals rather than larger ones, and the shape of their teeth are more similar to fish-eating animals, suggesting they were predators that ate fish along with other small animals as well. However, despite their aquatic diet, the Pachycetids were still largely terrestrial animals, and in life were probably no more aquatic than a tapir. The first whale to show a suite of aquatic features was called Amulocetus, that lived in Pakistan around 47 million years ago. Amulocetus had functional legs, which would have been able to support the animal's body weight on land, but the limbs were shorter than the previous cetaceans, which is common among more aquatic animals. For instance, Ambulocetus' limb proportion would have been similar to an otter, and also similar to an otter, the vertebrae in their tail had flattened slightly, to make the tail fatter and so more useful for movement in the water. Unlike Pachycetus, its teeth suggested that it would have targeted larger prey, and also Ambulocetus had a narrower and longer skull similar to a crocodile. Crocodiles have this jaw structure because it helps them eat large struggling prey, so it's possible that Ambulocetus may have lived in a similar way, by ambushing predators that come close to the water's edge for a drink. Unlike all of the cetaceans and whale ancestors mentioned so far though, Ambulocetus' fossils have also been discovered in marine environments, being the first whales known to have spent at least some time in the sea. Although its fossils are known from coastal environments, and there is no evidence that it would have been capable of swimming in the open ocean for prolonged periods of time. The first whales to escape the marine coastal waters and spread out across the world were a family called the Protocetids, the most well known of them being a cetacean called Rhodocetus, which is also known from Pakistan. The reason that all the earlier cetacean species and ancestors can be found in India and Pakistan is because this area used to be an ancient ocean called the Tethys, which is where the vast majority of early whale evolution took place. 
But around 30 to 40 million years ago, the Tethys closed up as Africa joined up with the other continents and India smashed into Asia, forming the Himalayas, which is why you can find whale fossils up in the mountains. Rhodocetus was similar to Ambulocetus in that it would have been capable of carrying its body weight on land and would have looked more like an otter or a seal than a modern whale, but it was more adapted to life in the sea. For example, whereas Ambulocetus had nostrils at the tip of its nose, Rhodocetus had its nostrils about halfway up its head, so it could submerge more of its body while still breathing. An important transition for whales eventually developing their blowhole. However, the Protocetes were also a lot more diverse than the previous cetacean families, with many different body shapes and many whales that were more and less adapted to life in the ocean. For instance, it is likely that Rhodocetus still had a normal tail, but the fossil vertebrae of another member of this family, called Protocetus, looks like it may have had the beginnings of what looked like a tail fluke. These new aquatic adaptations helped them spread around the world, as these were the first family of whales to have fossils discovered outside the Indian subcontinent. The fossil of Protocetus had been discovered in Egypt, which would have been on the other side of the Tethys at this point in history. However, some whales got much further, including one whale named Perigocetus that had made it all the way across the Atlantic by about 40 million years ago, as its fossils have been found in Peru. Some of the Protocetids, like Protocetus, shared many features with modern whales. However, most, if not all of them, would have still been able to return to land at some point, this is proven by their skeletal structure, but also a specimen of a member of this family called Myocetus was fossilized while pregnant, and the position of the fetus suggests the animal gave birth on land because modern whales give birth tail first so that the baby doesn't drown during childbirth. The first cetaceans, known to be fully aquatic, were called the Basilosaurids, the best known among them being a whale called Dorodon that lived about 42 million years ago. Dorodon's hind flippers had shrunk down to the point where they would have no longer been able to support their body on land, and their forelimbs were flat and flipper-shaped, and had a range of movement that would have been useless out of the water. However, these adaptations would have made them much more efficient swimmers. Unlike the cetaceans that came before that we have to speculate what they ate, one Dorodon specimen has several fish fossilized inside its stomach, so we know they were predatory, and would have had to have been good swimmers to catch fish out in the open ocean. Now that these creatures no longer had to return to the land, the Basilosaurids had much more relaxed size restrictions, and so some of them adapted to become massive, like Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus may have been able to grow to over 20 meters, being a similar length to a sperm whale, so they wouldn't have been as large as the largest modern whales, but they were the first family of whales to grow to very large sizes, and Basilosaurus would have been the largest animal of its day. Basilosaurus gut contents show they hunted large fish and sharks, but also a fossil of a Dorodon skull has bite marks that match the jaws of Basilosaurus, so they may have been the first whales that hunted other whales. The Basilosaurids may have been fully aquatic, but they were still very different to modern whales. They wouldn't have been especially intelligent, as the brain casing in their skull suggests their brain to body size ratio was average for mammals of the time, and there is no evidence they could echolocate. Basilosaurids also had a very different body shape, being longer and more serpentine, with slimmer bodies than modern whales. Also, with the exception of belugas, all other whales have a fused neck vertebrae, meaning their head is just an extension of their body, but Basilosaurids still would have been able to swivel their head at least a small amount. These traits made Basilosaurus and other Basilosaurids look similar to the Cretaceous-era marine reptiles, the Mosasaurs, possibly being convergent evolution from living in a similar way. This is also the reason that this whale and the family are named Basilosaurids, because when their fossils were first discovered, they were thought to be marine reptiles. These funny whales were very successful, having many species and being the dominant whale group in the oceans right up until about 30 million years ago where the ancestors of modern baleen and toothed whales took over. But we can't forget that these giants of the ocean had very humble beginnings as a small deer-like animals the size of a raccoon. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.